I have prayed for you that your faith fail not, and you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. I wish verse 33 hadn't been necessary, but listen to it. But he said to him, uh, this is Simon Peter, Lord, with you, I am ready to go both to prison and to death. Did you ever hear a Christian overstate his faith? Amen. Did you ever hear a person say, I'll do whatever God wants me to do. I'll do it instantly. I'll not wait. I'll not hesitate. I am committed to God all the way. And yet it has been said by great preachers of old, the world has yet to see what will happen when one man is completely yielded to the will of God. I think it's very necessary for Christians not to become arrogant. What did Simon Peter mean by this? When things were calm, when they were together out in the garden or walking about on the streets or the roads, when they were in a quiet place with the Lord, it was easy for him to say, Lord, I'll be with you regardless of what comes. I will stand with you regardless of the difficulties. And when people misuse and abuse you, I will be with you anyway. I will never turn away from my faith and trust in Christ. I heard about a little church in Korea several years ago. And as you are aware, uh, some of the great Christians in, uh, the, through the generations have come out of Korea. Uh, many of the people were won to Christ through the ministry of American soldiers, by the way. Uh, so uh, we understand that this is true. I understand that in the process of the police action that we call war, the enemy troops came to a small church and demanded that the people reject their faith in Jesus Christ. They said, if you do not turn away from your faith in Jesus Christ, we're going to shoot you. And the people stood out in front of their little Hamlet church and they said, fire away. It's sometimes easier to die for our faith than it is to live for our faith. Amen. It's easier because an instant and we're gone. It's all over. We have stood the test. We have made a great commitment. Simon Peter was saying, Lord, if you go to jail, I'll go with you. If you go to death, I'll go with you. I'll go wherever you go and do whatever you demand of me. Lord, with you, I'm ready to go both to prison and to death. Overstating our commitment. I had rather hear a person say, Lord, I love you, but I don't do it very well. I trust you, but I haven't learned the ultimate test of trust. I'd rather hear a person say, I'm on my way, but I haven't gotten there yet, than a person to say, I've got it all together, I've got it all fixed, and I'm going to be the best Christian you ever saw. I had a man who had been out of church a long time in the community where I was serving, and, and he said, when I come back to church, I'm going to be the best Christian in this church. Well, he came back, he lasted for a few months, and then he was out again. Why do you suppose? Because he was trying to do it himself. He made a commitment far beyond his ability to keep up, and 
what Jesus was saying to Simon Peter is that you can't do this by yourself. Uh, I heard a man say recently that living the Christian life is not hard. It's impossible. Amen. That what God wants us to realize is that unless He is in our heart and helping us every day, will be defeated, as sure as the world. Simon said, well, I'll go to prison with you, I'll go to death with you. Jesus said, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied three times that you even know me. Wow. Isn't it a little bit discouraging to hear the Lord say, you're going to flunk. You're going to fail. You're going to fall flat on your face. And as long as you try to do it all by yourself, it's impossible. But let's finish. There's a passage in James that I want us to look at for just a moment. James chapter 4. Verse 6. If you're turning the pages, I'll give you a moment. But he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. There's more in Scripture about humbling ourselves than there is about God humbling us. That we are to bow ourselves. Jesus said, be as the youngest. Be as a servant. He talked to his disciples about the person who comes to the banquet hall and takes the prominent seat is being on dangerous ground because if some other dignitary more prominent than he shows up, then he would have to move and it would be humiliating. So he said, choose the low end of the table. Be far away from the head place. Live a humble life, and God's grace will be adequate for you. Are we hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is? We can't do this stuff that He requires all along. We must depend upon His ability, upon His grace, upon His sacrifice, upon our faith in Him. So He said, to Simon Peter, Satan has desired to have you that he may have all of you, that he may sift you like wheat to make his own bread or his own product. But I have prayed for you that your faith will never utterly fail. And when you turn to seriousness, when you are converted, one uh, translator says, when you come around to see it properly, then I have a ministry for you. Great Christians have always been the product of failure and faltering and recovery. When the Spirit of the Lord speaks to us and draws us again to Himself, he makes it possible for us to be a part of someone's solution. Ministry comes. The human person comes to be useful only when he approaches life with humility and he, when he recognizes his helplessness. Someone has said, man's opportunity 
is when he reaches the point of desperation and allows God to do a work in his heart. Have you come to that point? Repentance, you know, happens to us when we realize that, that we, among all the human beings on the earth, are sinners also. And so I put the title of this message that Jesus' disciples were not perfect either. And I suspect that in our own hearts we know that certainly we're not. And even though we have made some gains, I, I like to think that the preacher was right who said, be patient with me. God isn't finished with me yet. He's still working on me. There's still a ways to go. There's still a distance to travel. There's still a recovery to find. And then he said to Simon Peter, when you come to yourself, when you're in your right mind, when you understand that the world's value, the world's opinion of greatness is not God's opinion, and when you understand that you are to be a servant, you are to be a child, you are to be humble, then my grace will be sufficient for you. And that's my message today. I could preach on and on on this subject. I remember one morning uh, in a series of meetings near the Gulf Coast when they asked me to speak on the radio and I sat in the studio and I had about a 45 minute sermon and I was through with it in 15. Uh, there's nobody there, nobody responding, nobody uh, paying very much attention and little red light comes on and says you're on the air. Uh, I went through it in a hurry and I got out of there. Uh, you understand my purpose. But I hope that we learn this simple lesson from these many scriptures when Jesus said God's perspective and ours are not the same. That we must depend upon Him and trust in His infinite grace that is so beyond us. Let's bow again for moments. Our dear Lord, we pray that you would deepen us in our faith today and in our dependence upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Make him first and great in our hearts and help us to be honest about our devotion. Make us humble in our hearts that we may receive your wonderful grace. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to give you an opportunity this morning to respond to the gospel of the Lord Jesus. As you know, we have not gone into detail about that. But it's necessary that we repent of our sin, our personal sin, and place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He's planned it. He perfected it. He paid the price for it. And he offers as a free gift of grace eternal life. As we stand to sing, we do not
hang back here. <laughs> Would you lead our closing prayer? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, it is uh, a great privilege and an honor to gather here with brothers and sisters of like faith, to gather in your house to worship and praise and glorify your name, to worship and praise your Son. We've had a beautiful morning. We've had a beautiful service. Lord, would I ask you to just place this in our hearts and our minds, that it did not go void, that we would surrender unto you that which belongs to you. That is our life, our soul, our spirit. For without you, Father, without Christ, we are nothing. Bless each one here today, Lord, as we go to our homes. Keep us safe that we can gather once again. And it's in your Son's name that I ask this. I give you all the glory.